One of the biggest challenges of the 21st century is how to guarantee food security for the world's growing population. Guyana and the rest of the Caribbean have come together under the One Health, One Caribbean, One Love project to combat health risk to human and animal ecosystems. Our guests today are One Health, One Caribbean, One Love Ambassador TOK's Roshan Basie-Clark. The initiative is to say that we all need to work together. And Dr. Dan Hartley of the Guyana Lifestyle Development Authority. Work is being done, especially with respect to livestock, to educate farmers. Thank you for joining us. You gained international fame as a member of the dancehall group TOK okay, yeah. from Jamaica. Definitely. How did you get involved with the One Health, um, One Caribbean, One Love project, which is funded by the European Union? Well, um, I wear many hats, right? So outside of being a member of TOK, which is a question sign at this moment, um, uh, I have a record label called Bombers Records and one of the things that I've done with the record label is start a festival in Jamaica called the Blue Mountain Music Festival. Now that festival is a partnership between my company and um, the managers of the park, National Park, um, and they're called the Jamaica Conservation and Development Trust. Um, so the board of directors for that, com that organization um, has noticed my involvement with you know, nature and the mountains and actually that mountain is, the mountains are now um, designated as a World Heritage Site by UN UNESCO. So um, there is a particular board member, her name is Dr. Degia, and she and I spoke and she realized that I'm very interested in using my artist's popularity to um, create more awareness for certain issues and to contribute to you know environmental issues so I love the mountains and basically from that discussion came into she's part of One Health Caribbean um, and so she asked me if I wanted to be involved in the One Health Jamaica and I said of course and then from there we discussed expanding it to the entire Caribbean so that's why I'm here in Ghana promoting the One Health Caribbean um, project initiative and trying to let more people become aware of the of the movement the focus of the One Health Leadership Series is to address health risk to human and animal ecosystems from the swine fever in Haiti to the bovine tuberculosis in Guyana. Is the Caribbean moving fast enough in putting together a comprehensive approach to tackle diseases transmitted from animal to human? Um, well, I'm young to it, so I can't say if we're moving fast enough, but I think this project is definitely something that will speed up the process because it, it is something that speaks to the, um, doctors from different disciplines, veterinarian doctors that deal with animals, human doctors and environmental doctors and most times these three disciplines would work in silos handling their own issues but now that we recognize that there is this interdependency or this connectivity between all three for the diseases that we have um, the initiative is to say that we all need to work together, or they all need to work together, I'm not a doctor, but uh, the disciplines need to work together to handle this issue. And it's about handling what is happening as well as preemptive approach to, um, to kind of ensure that we can limit, if not eradicate, certain diseases coming around. So I think this is a forward movement and I think it's going to speed up that process for sure. Okay. Do you think the Caribbean people are concerned enough with the food they eat? where the source their food come from? Um, well, maybe, I'm not sure how, how aware we are, but I think this project will definitely create more awareness, especially when persons like myself that are not coming from a technical side of, of things, but just like a, a, a general awareness. Um, I think, especially with certain religious groups and ethnic groups, um, some people are a lot more aware of what they eat than others, but we want it to be a general thing that it doesn't matter if you're a Rastafarian or a Muslim or certain kinds of background that make you choose what you want to eat, but this is a general information that everyone is cognizant of, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, while you were on tour, um, were you ever concerned about the source of the food you ate? Like, were this, if the steak you ate it came from a cow that was living in an unhealthy environment that had bovine tuberculosis and virus and stuff? Um, I think I was concerned to a uh, general sense, but not to be too probing and find out for sure. I can tell you though, when I went to Kenya for the first time, you know, we went to a restaurant called Carnivore and they offered us um, ostrich, crocodile, um, wildebeest, 
And while the other members were like, yeah, let me try that, I was like, give me a pineapple pizza. You know, <laughs> because I wanted to stay safe to what I believe my system knew. So um, I think in general traveling, I am very wary of new foods, but not on a health level, just general. But I think um, this kind of awareness will create more, more um, sensitivity to, to that. Now, scientists have advised that more than six out of every ten infectious diseases in humans are spread from animals. Yeah, sixty percent. Yeah. The Caribbean suffered outbreaks of bird flu and mad cow disease, but still many farmers, especially small farmers, are unaware of these diseases and the symptoms they ought to look for. Right. How can we reshape our regional media campaign? Right. Um, well, I'm glad you asked that. One of the other things that I do is a show called Listen Me News. Um, each week I take local news, international news, entertainment news and sports and I, I basically turn it into a song and I DJ to the, to the national TV in Jamaica just like how someone would be reading the news but I'm, I'm singing it and I'm DJing it and what we have found is with listening news it has had a tremendous impact on the kids and it kind of make you more retentive of the information that, that we're sharing so I think innovative media like listening news and other ways of communicating messages to, you know, because you have doctors who are speaking in their technical terms, but then you have the general public that might not understand some of the terms and so forth. So I think it's for people like myself and other innovative programs to, um, to if you will, um, translate that information to the general public and let them become more aware of such a serious issue. You have been interacting with lots of people in the region. What's yeah. the most often asked question about the One Health? Um, um, most times people ask me, why are you doing this? You know, um, Because I'm a musician and because I'm so driven by music and creating, it seems very left field from being an artist. Um, last night I ran into Demarco and, and Ayakteen who are here for a performance the other day and you know they were like what are you doing here and i'm like you know working on a project you know but the typical expectations that you're here for a concert and while i love that and i will always be a primarily an artist i think um it's important to leverage that to do some more good for the for the world you know what i mean so definitely the question is always why are you doing this and my re my answer is just because i love nature and i love um i like doing things that have never been done before so this is a whole new world for me and innovative approaches I think is what I am what I specialize in there is an ongoing debate in the Caribbean about introducing genetically modified produce both yeah. crops and animals yeah. some argue that because of harsh weather conditions and increased diseases Caribbean farmers should turn to GM produce to ensure food security what mm. is your view on this I'm glad you say your view because my view might not be the view of one health so I'm talking very independent now I'm not necessarily so, so um, sold on GMOs, you know what I mean? Right now, I know last week FDA approved um, the first GMO genetically modified meat, which was salmon. And I mean, the normal salmon is like this and the GMO is like this, you know what I mean? And so, while I can understand for food security, the benefits of it, I'm just not, I'm, I call me old fashioned, I just like organic stuff and natural stuff. Um, and, and so I think it's a sensitive issue because I understand both concerns, food security and that. So it's kind of, it's open for discussion and I don't have all the answers, but personally I'm not into the GMO story. One Health, One Caribbean, One Love Project focuses on promoting a healthier Caribbean. As of 2014, an estimated 2 million people were living with HIV in Latin America and the Caribbean with 100,000 new infections. Yeah. What is your World AIDS Day message, especially to the younger audience? Well, definitely, um, I would like to tell the ones out there, you know, the kids, abstinence, you know, it sounds boring, but trust me, it's better for you in the long run. Um, and to adults, I would say um, safe sex practices, you know, um, definitely prevention is better than cure, as we would say in Jamaica, and some things you can't cure. So um, I would just say, as much as possible, try to be safe, be responsible, and um, if you know that you have things, also be responsible and don't walk around sharing these things, you know what I mean? So, um, that's my message, you know, try to be more healthy and cognizant and respectful of your fellow citizens, you know?
see your hair recently disbanded. Oh my, why we broke up? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> apart from your work as a regional ambassador yeah. with this project, yeah, any plans for your solo career? Definitely, I'm I'm working on a solo career right now. I have a single called Journey to Greatness. And that single kind of speaks to my whole movement right now. I believe in each of us, within the group as, as well as outside, we all have greatness within us. And I think um, it's at that point, we've been around for 23 years, and I think it's at that point now for me to step out and show my greatness, my musical story, what is bass in music about. People know me for the bass voice from my crew, my dogs, or you know, these kind of hits. But um, there's more to me than just a voice. There's a whole musical sound and direction and I think it's that time now to do that. So, you know, TOK fans around the world were disappointed and definitely I, I, I wouldn't close the door. I wouldn't say we're broken up. I would just say we're at a crossroads. We're probably a hiatus, a break. But um, definitely right now I'm rolling out 100% of my solo stuff. Check out my, my IG, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media. It's Basie Music, B-A-Y-C. Not Baby C. Mm -hmm. B <laughs> it's Basie Music, B-A-Y-C Music. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm making music constantly. I was writing a song before I come here, and I'm sure tonight I'm going to be writing a next song. And, you know, I'm, I'm very excited. I feel like right now it's a new time for me. So I'm very excited, and I'm making a lot of music. And I have an album coming out next year. And um, between singles and working on the album, you'll be hearing a lot of stuff from me. It was great chatting with you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you for taking the time out. Thank to you come for to having me. Channel it was a pleasure. Yeah, man, bless you. Our guest today is Dr. Dane Hartley of the Guyana Lifestyle Development Authority. He is also Guyana's representative for the One Health, One Caribbean, One Love project. The project aims to train leaders across 15 countries to develop and manage holistic and scientific solutions to ensure food security and safety. Dr. Hartley will be discussing what are Guyana's plans now and in the future to ensure food security. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good day. The One Health, One Caribbean, One Love project is funded by the European Union. Uh, tell us what inspired you guys to get on board with this project. Well, great. Again, thanks for having me on board. Um, uh, being within the field of veterinary science, um, it's usually pretty, pretty interesting and intriguing whenever an opportunity comes up for you to be a part of something that um, would really push um, your knowledge and push your skills and uh, allow you to really see things a bit differently. Um, when the project was advertised, um, we would have been asked um, to apply and once you would have fulfilled the requirements, then you were given a chance to be a part of this leadership training. Um, I always saw it as, a, as an opportunity and still to see it as an opportunity to serve um, a bit uh, in a, big, a better capacity, a capacity whereby we can really bring on board um, more persons, different backgrounds, and really and truly deal with problems more holistically and not have everybody do their own thing in their own environment. Um, for us as veterinarians, and for, for me in particular, we know that our work with animals is geared to humans. So that way we would have already been doing some One Health work. The focus of the One Health Leadership Series is to address the health risk to the human and animal ecosystems. Guyana has been affected by the bovine tuberculosis while Cuba is fighting with the swine fever virus. What's the project's role in combating these diseases in the region? Great. Um, one of the primary focus of um, the One Health project is to allow us to maximize our resources. We being a number of small countries, small economies, trying to battle these things, these things in our own, um, we would really be taking a pretty long time in resolving them. Um, what the One Health approach is all about is having us pool resources, pool knowledge, pool all the, everything we can ha use in order to fully and in a meaningful way combat some of these diseases that you're talking about. Um, yes, it's true that most of the emerging diseases now are zoonotic diseases and they do have an implication for both man and animals. Um, so with an approach that the One Health is um, promoting is that we can work together 
share laboratory resources, share technicians and, and expertise amongst within a country, between countries, so that we can better deal with these um, these uh, diseases that are pretty expensive and costly to, to, to manage. The series will be selecting leaders from across um, from 15 countries who will be responsible for developing and managing health policies that have holistic and scientific solutions to ensure food security and safety. Who will be chosen as Guyana's representative? We have three members. Um, Dr. Maxine Paris um, from ECO, Dr. Renard Overton from the Guyana Livestock Development Authority and myself also from the Guyana Livestock Development Authority. Presently, the One Health team is in Guyana and this is our third module that we are doing and it's health in the environment. We would have started in November of 2014 in Tobago with the first module and we would have done the second module on food safety and food security in Jamaica. So the task now is for the team leaders to now work along with the various sectors within your country to help and establish a national One Health Committee. So you can have national policies, you can help better guide um, for, and develop frameworks for stuff to be done in a, we keep stressing, a more holistic manner. So we can have cooperation between ministries, sharing of information between agencies, so that we can properly link stuff that is happening within the health of animals, within the circle of health of humans, and how it impacts the environment, and how the en environment impacts on those two um, subjects. What are the challenges facing Guyana regarding combating diseases that spread from animals to humans? Um, one of the main things I think is being able to probably, probably diagnose these diseases um, at the level of animals. We did quite a bit of work with our health sector and human medicine. Now it's time to be focused on um, the animal component and being able to better and in a timely manner diagnose diseases and not have um, uh, a situation whereby it becomes out of hand at the level of the animals and then therefore spreads um, to humans. As you mentioned, with respect to the science of the, with respect to veterinary science, it's always aimed at saving the lives of humans through animals, through healthy foods and healthy pets and so on. So um, if we are able to properly manage and diagnose diseases and increase our, our um, animal population so we can have uh, you know proper food and healthy wholesome food then we will really be on a on the road to um, having a much better life. The Caribbean is struggling to detect and fight diseases that are spreading from animals to humans. How important is the link with the EU? Um, the EU presently serves as a main funding um, agency. Um, so yes, one, the EU being on board, um, you can look forward to capital investments, monies and so on. But they also have an important link to expertise and skill sets that are much needed in this part of the world. So the One Health Project expands a little beyond just training the leaders and we also, they're also envisioning other components, components that would be um, training of laboratory staff, maximizing um, the ability uh, of persons to be able to diagnose diseases, especially in animals, so that we can really stop it before it goes farther, creating early warning systems, um, aiding in doing things like developing um, systems that can link ministries uh, for sharing of um, information. So the EU comes with quite a, an array of, uh, of um, support bases that it can provide for us and um, it's pretty much welcome. Do you think Caribbean people are concerned enough with the source of their food? <laughs> um, a bit. Uh, I really don't know how to go, but what I would say is that with, with respect to Caribbean people, one, um, I think one of the reasons why we might, it might seem as though um, we're not that um, concerned about the source of our food might be one day techniques we used to cook in. We would usually cook foods and have it well done which helps to save us from quite a number of you know lingering organisms that could have um, really wreaked havoc on your health should have you um, up you decided to consume it rare um, but I think more and more with the with tourism 
persons are becoming aware and um, the push is that we in countries we do not have two sets of policies so you have one food policy for tourists and another food policy for locals it's all about having one policy across um, your country and as such it's going to bring awareness and it's going to create policies and influence decisions that will see persons yes having access to much better um, quality food scientists know that more than six out of every ten infectious diseases in animals are in humans, humans sorry yeah. are spread from animals yes. The Caribbean suffered outbreaks from the of bird flu and mad cow disease. How are we are we doing enough to educate our farmers and the wider public? But yes, um, we're we're pushing, and there is always room for improvement. There is always going to be a one, two person that are missed. But I think a push is on, and a, a quite a bit is being done in order to have persons aware. And even without persons, um, actually agencies actually going on ground, there is quite a bit of information on the media and the and the news and and persons. Before we would go out, persons would call and say they're hearing about you know this place having a break of X disease or Y and what is the position in Guyana. So I think persons are being um, are made aware a lot through um, the news and, and other media sources. Um, and yes, uh, GLDA work is being done, especially with respect to livestock, to educate farmers, to train farmers. There is a training coming up um, very shortly in whereby we are working with our technicians, ensuring that they are fine-tuned in um, being able to diagnose and certain diseases on ground and we're also working gonna have a component working with farmers to allow and to, to allow farmers the opportunity to be exposed to this training that they can be able to you know be quick on the ball when they see X Y and Z should should I worry should I not worry is this something they should be concerned about and calling the veterinarian or not so yes work is being done in that area but they will always be you know it would always be a continuous um, effort so you say in your work it, it requires you to travel around the country and to meet with farmers. Uh, what what is the question mostly asked by them from a health perspective in terms of the livestock? Um, a lot of farmers are really concerned that they're f that they are getting the support needed, especially with respect to technical um, support for diagnosis of diseases um, farmers are pretty much interested in that when they see some problem that there's somebody that they can call that they can get some answers from some of what really they, they're usually concerned of when it comes to um to health with respect to their animals now, there is an ongoing debate in the Caribbean about introducing genetically modified produce, both crops and animals. So some argue that because of harsh weather conditions and increased diseases, Caribbean farmers should turn to GM produce to ensure food security. What is your view on this? Um, it can be, it's a pretty touchy topic for now, but with respect to the Caribbean, um, from a few Caribbean countries, you have enough landmass and enough resources to not have to go GMO. First population is steadily growing larger and larger, and there would be more demand on all the resources. So, like it or not, sooner or later they would have to come up with some solution that's going to allow the world to, world to be able to feed all these persons um, a lot of whom are increasing in um, in their um, wealth and in their ability to spend and in their demand for more food especially meats so there will be a push for something to be done to increase the food supplies but with, respect, but with us in the Caribbean um, I don't really see it being something that we have to think about manufacturing, um, about doing in the, in, the, in, in, in the short term. But it's something we have climate change to worry about and its effect, it's a, it's effect, um, effect on crops. Um, that is also something to consider. Guyana has seen a construction boom over the last three decades. Cane fields are now transformed into residential areas. 
Experts are concerned that the use of prime farmland for residential and urban expansion is threatening food security. How do we strike a balance? I think the main way of striking a balance with respect to something like that is through policies. There must be policies that comes up that speaks to zoning of lands and where what activities are allowed to take place. Um, and it has a lot of benefits because once we would have zoned an area and we can specify what is the purpose of that area, then we can better facilitate the necessary infrastructure that is needed to develop that particular area so that we don't have clashes. And by being able to zone, we can maximize the use of those lands and really expand our agricultural production. Guyana has a lot of lands that, you know, um, that, you know, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> the One Health, One Caribbean, One Love project focuses on promoting a healthier group. And as of 2014, an estimated 2 million people were living with HIV in Latin America and the Caribbean. What is your World Aids Day message, especially to the younger audience? <laughs> um, my message is be wise. Um, persons need to be wise, they need to be cognizant of what is out there, they need to know the risks that are involved and, and choose wisely. Um, uh, there is no, the, the, the type of disease we're talking about is not one that um, is curable, at least for now, so, but preventable. So your focus should be on just that, preventing at all costs. Um, what the one health project is is really aimed at doing is that with respect to diseases like those is that we can have um build again on relations on on expertise and shared expertise although it might be hiv aids we know a disease that runs very closely with hiv aids patients a disease like tuberculosis and then and um, what is the incidence of that and the tuberculosis in our animals so to that end, I know One Health is pushing to have us work in a more collaborative effort so that we can better control if it's that we see a correlation between what is happening in humans and animals and we can link the organism, then we can deal with it probably at the animal level and reduce the incidence so that persons living with HIV AIDS have a lesser chance of contracting tuberculosis if it's not prevalent. Okay. Well, thank you again Dr. Hartley for joining thank me. It was a much. pleasure chatting with thank you. Thank you very much for having me.